Well, good evening, First Baptist family and friends. We are so grateful to be together this evening and to have this chance to gather here in the middle of the week to remember God's grace that has sustained us to this very moment and God's grace that is with us during this time of worship and reflection and prayer with one another. And so we hope that you will bring all that you are to this time and that you will join us in turning over to our God all of the concerns that we carry together both individually and in the collective life that we share as First Baptist Greensboro. We come now to take a look at our prayer list. We call it a covenant of concerns because it is a covenant that we hold with one another to bear one another's burdens and to share in one another's joys. And so let us now come to this list and be aware of those whose needs in our church are most acute. This evening we are praying for those who grieve, and that includes George Scott, our dear brother, who is mourning the death of his brother-in-law who died of COVID-19 just last week. And uh, George's sister has also been diagnosed, and so we're praying for her health and um, how devastating to be encountering her own health challenges as she experiences this grief. And so our prayers are with George and with his sister and with all of those who are mourning. And we also remember the family and friends of Cynthia Stone. Cynthia is a dear part of the life of our church from her over 30 years as part of our Happy Hearts community. Um, Cynthia was also a member of College Park Baptist, and College Park led her service last week. Uh, many of our Happy Hearts community were a part of that and shared stories, and we think of all of them, especially as they mourn Cynthia, uh, and we are uh, conscious of the great gifts of her life here in the life of our church and in our wider community. Among those that uh, we hold as recent concerns are Harold Messick. Grateful that Harold is home after his recent hospitalization for an infection, and our prayers remain with Harold and Jane. Sandra, uh, Ferry's sister, is recovering from blood clots in her lungs after recent hospitalization. Our prayers are with Anna Whitlow, dear friend of Jack Foxworth and a part of our congregation amidst her cancer diagnosis and management of that. Uh, we pray for Brian Deer, our dear brother, uh, as he continues to um, live with his kidney disease. We pray for Carol and his mother as well. And then you see many others listed here. Hubert Johnson has received some good reports after recent tests. We are grateful for that. Uh, we would mention Betty Sharp after her ankle surgery as she continues to rehab that. Um, Cynthia Towns remains on our hearts uh, amidst her chemo treatment for cancer, as does Ann Gurley amidst her health concerns. Also, uh, new to our list tonight, we're praying for Paula Hamlet, who is a friend of Jill Pegram um, amidst an illness that she is experiencing. We pray for Jill and all of those who love Paula, as we also pray for Paula and her healing and wholeness in this time. And then you see so many who are listed with the, that word, COVID-19, next to their names. And um, that represents, of course, how this pandemic that we are experiencing in such a broad and global way is also intimate and personal. And it includes people that we love and know and hold dear, like Mike and Paige and Jim and Joyce and Tammy and so many others who are suffering um, at various stages with this disease. And uh, we pray for all of them as we pray for all of us, for our safety and for our well-being and for our health. Well, it was so good to see so many of you last Sunday at our January drive through which was held on February 7th because of a rain delay. Uh, but these drive throughs and any opportunity we have to connect face-to-face, -face, they are so dear and important to us as a church for practical reasons. First of all, uh, they allow us to pass out things, to raise money for our preschool as we had wonderful response to our soup lunch, and to uh, put materials in your hands that you'll need for the season of Lent. And I'd remind you that you can still come by and pick up a Lenten kit for all ages under our portico at any time. They allow us to collect supplies that are needed by mission partners. And this month, we had a tremendous response to our call for supplies for Backpack Beginnings and the important work that they do. And you can still drop off supplies in the church bus parked in the parking lot. Help us to fill up that bus from floor to ceiling. Uh, and that will allow us to support our friends at Backpack Beginnings. You can do that at any time between 9 and 5 here in the church parking lot. 
But beyond those sort of pragmatic concerns, our drive-through on Sunday uh, was such a gift because it allowed us to see one another and to sense one another and to um, have a greater understanding of what we're experiencing, um, what we're feeling, what we are journeying through, and how we are doing that even in this time of physical distance still yet together. And so I sense from some a kind of heaviness of spirit or concern for some of those that we have listed here tonight. Uh, We sense from others a lot of hope and joy and anticipation as uh, some in our church are excited about the vaccines that they're receiving or hopeful about um, the news that we're hearing uh, about improvement related to this pandemic. But somewhere in between that were others of us who are feeling many things at the same time. Whatever it is that you are feeling, I just hope that you will remember that you are not alone. And I hope that even in this time of prayer, we can remember the presence of all of us together as community and most of all, the presence of our God who knits us all together in love. So conscious of that, let us come now to a moment to make our concerns known to God. Let us pray. Well, here we are, O God, and we can be only where we are and who we are and what we are in this moment. And so we pray, O God, that you would receive us just as we are and that you would assure us that you love us just that way and you accept us just that way and you affirm us just that way. And so, God, we come with the fullness of all of the complexities and challenges and joys and burdens of our lives. And, God, we lift to you So many who are dear to us whose lives are in their own ways complicated and challenging. God, you know the struggles, the concerns, and the worries of all of these whom we hold in the love of our church tonight. And we lift them up to the light of your love, knowing, God, that there is so much uh, that you do to bring about wholeness and healing, and that there is so much that is happening beyond what we can even understand somewhere in the mystery of your good love for us and your constant work on our behalf. And so, God, we pray that you uh, would continue that work and that you would, uh, through your Spirit, empower us to join you in it. And, God, that you would give us the strength and the faith to trust you and to follow you more closely uh, as individuals, but also as a collective, as First Baptist Church Greensboro. Help us, O God, to do justice more, to love mercy more, to walk humbly and more closely with you each and every day, uh, and in doing so, to make known here on earth your love and um, your, your light as we have experienced it and as we have trusted it this evening. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, your love and your light incarnate and present with us even now. In his name we pray. Amen. Will we continue now as we sing together and then experience together a reflection on the practice that has our focus this evening. We're thinking about the practice of friendship and what it means to love our friends and to reach for our friends, particularly in this time, uh, this challenging season of winter and winter amidst a pandemic. And so may we give ourselves over to that now as we continue in this time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
tonight we continue our discussion on the theme in the mid of winter and tonight we are considering the practice of friendship you heard chris preach about that on sunday and tonight i want to offer for you a couple of practices to consider as you think about the importance of friendship in your life i am dressed up in this get up that I call my weekend uniform. <laughs> this is what I wear every weekend whenever we are going to see our friends. And so we are masked and we are in our warm hats. Usually I have gloves on and I even wear these snow bibs when we are outside in the evenings. Typically each weekend we gather at the home of one of our friends or here at our house on the back deck. We usually have a fire roaring either here or back in our fire pit in our backyard. And we are masked and we gather with our friends outside so that we can safely engage in friendship together. And so friendship looks a little bit different right now, doesn't it? Being able to be friends to one another in the midst of a pandemic has taken on some different forms. Instead of gathering inside, my house is uh, right behind you, instead of gathering inside on the weekends with our friends, we gather outdoors. And in order to do that, we have to wear a lot of clothes. Some nights it gets down into the 30s and even 20s and yet we still persist in spending time with our friends because friendship is so important. And scripture has a lot to say about friendship. I'm gonna reread for you the passage that you heard in worship on Sunday from the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter one. And this is when um, Naomi's sons have died and her husband has died. And starting in chapter one, verse eight, she says to her two daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. She kissed them and they wept aloud. And they said to her, no, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I have, still have sons in my womb that they would become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I'm too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it's been far more bitter for me than for you because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her God's return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well. If even death's part, death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. In scripture, we are reminded that friendship demands a lot of us. This is one of our first depictions of true friendship in scripture. And we see that Ruth makes a choice to follow Naomi in, in a time and in a, in a culture and in a life experience that doesn't even demand that from her and yet she adores Naomi so much that she says I will make sacrifices to be part of your life to be connected to you and just another book over in first Samuel we hear the story of Jonathan and David and their friendship a covenant friendship a friendship that David says means more to him than any relationship that he could have. 
the scriptures tell us that their souls were knit together. That is a deep abiding friendship that involves sacrifice from both parties. And then we know in the New Testament that Jesus tells us in John, no greater love is this than that we lay down our lives for our friends. That is the ultimate sacrifice, isn't it? To lay down our lives for those with whom we are in friendships with. Friendship is sacrificial. Friendship takes work. And so my encouragement to you this week is to consider what friendship looks like for you and how you might be a better friend or a more intentional friend this week. But I'm also encouraging you to consider ways that you might be a more sacrificial friend this week. Perhaps friendship needs to look something like this. Perhaps you need to bundle up and go meet someone on their back porch to have a chat and remind them of how important their friendship is to you in spite of all of the things that are keeping us separated right now. Perhaps friendship for you means taking a few moments of your day to write a letter to someone that you've not connected with in a while. Perhaps there is a friendship that's kind of lingering out there that you want to make sure you tend to. Maybe that's what you're being asked to do this week. Perhaps it's a simple phone call, a reminder that you're thinking of a friend and hearing what their prayer needs are. Perhaps friendship this week means praying for someone over the phone, which might feel a little bit uncomfortable for you it might feel sacrificial even, but it might mean the world to the person on the other end of the line. And perhaps sacrificial friendship this week could mean that you are being called to consider who might need a friend. Maybe there's a friendship that you have not explored at all. Perhaps you feel like you have all of the friends that you need. But maybe there's someone out there who could use you as a friend. I encourage you this week to consider a practical way that you could engage in friendship, even in the cold of winter. Perhaps even, I think we have some winter weather heading our way in the next week. Perhaps you sit in a garage distanced from one another to see each other's face. Perhaps you FaceTime with one another call one another, write a letter. Friendship requires investment and sacrifice. And our Bible is filled of stories of friendship. And so we can know that God intends for us to be in relationships with one another, in friendships with one another. So how might you practice friendship right now in the mid of winter? Please pray with me. God, for those deep friendships you have placed in our lives, we offer thanks. For the moments when we feel lonely or we feel disconnected from our friends, we ask for your presence. God, help us to be the ones to step out in faith and sacrifice to deepen our friendships. And help us also, Lord, to reach out to someone who might need a friend. For it is in our friendships that we reflect you to each other. Be with us, we pray, in the mid of winter. Amen. Well, again, church, we are so grateful that you have been a part of this this evening. I hope that it's a reminder that you are always a part of something larger than yourselves, that you are a part of a community that loves you and that is so grateful for your tremendous gifts. Uh, as a community, we are continuing to seek to follow in the way of uh, friendship with God and with one another. And so as we do that, I uh, would remind you of the many opportunities that we have. I uh, would note that this Sunday we worship together and following worship, we will share in a church conference 
You're invited to attend that at 1 o'clock at fbcgso.org. It will be followed by a Zoom discussion on matters that have been presented. Uh, we're excited to hear reports on um, really encouraging end-of-year giving and a full 2020 financial report and how that sets us up for such important and productive work here in the year ahead. Uh, we will hear a report from our personnel committee, notably about our search for an associate pastor of missions and the committee that will, the search committee that will be formed for that. And we'll hear other important matters, some updates from Building and Grounds, um, some updates on leadership nomination process. So we hope you'll be a part of that on Sunday at one o'clock. I would also mention that next Wednesday begins the season of Lent, and you have already begun to hear about our journey through the season of Lent together as we walk the way to resurrection, remembering the journey of Jesus in the last days of his life and finding that that is in fact the way uh, to which we find new life and the hope of Easter and of resurrection. We pass through all of these stages right alongside of Christ. And so we hope that you will plan to be a part of worship throughout the season of Lent and it begins next Wednesday with our Ash Wednesday service. You can experience that in two ways. You can experience that at home by coming by the church starting Monday and picking up a kit of ashes and a liturgy that you can experience with your household or individually, or you can experience that in person. Uh, we have plans for uh, whether it is rain or shine. Next Wednesday, 5.30 to 7, we will be gathered outdoors here at the church and we will have um, a liturgy, a service prepared that you will experience as a household or as an individual with an individual minister. Uh, all of this has, of course, been planned with safety in mind, but also uh, with the opportunity to experience this holy day and to, by doing so, remember the fragility of our lives and the one who journeys with us right in the middle of that. And so I hope you'll plan to be a part of that next Wednesday in some form. But now as we're preparing to go from this time together out into all the times to which God is calling us and sending us, hear these words of blessing as we go. May the peace of Christ go with you wherever Christ may send you. May Christ guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he send you home rejoicing with the wonders he has shown you. May Christ send you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.